boring combat, uninteresting monsters. We have all been there. And it can be miserable, especially for many tabletop role-playing games such as D&D and Pathfinder that feature lots of combat during gameplay. So today we're gonna to be discussing 10 often overlooked ways game masters can hack their monsters to make combat way more fun and engaging for everyone at the table. But here's the thing, as I was thinking about this topic, I realized that uninteresting lame monsters such as giants from D&D 5e, big sacks of hit points that just do damage, are only part of the problem. You see, a good game master can take a brute like an ogre and still craft an exhilarating combat with it. So in addition to discussing changes you can make to monsters themselves, we're also going to hit on several ways you can change your approach to combat in general that will spice things up. Number one, the power of narrative description. This is something I see overlooked in like like all the time in games. The game master says something like, the kobold moves forward and attacks you. That's 24 to hit for three points of damage. And most of the combat proceeds like that and, and GMs wonder why their players are bored. Instead, try describing the combat similar to a scene you might see in a movie or read in the book. Did Aragorn just move forward and hit the orc for 12 points of damage? No, he strode forward with a snarl on his lips, arms cocked back, sword in hands, and swung for the orc's neck with all his strength. And then the orc, now headless, toppled to the ground. Trust me, you, you start sprinkling that sort of thing in your games and things become much more exciting. Don't go overboard though. A good narrative description is short but powerful and keeps the game moving forward. It doesn't have to just be the game master either. When players do this, it acts as a force multiplier and can be a beautiful thing. Now, frankly, the power of narrative descriptions in combat and in role-playing games in general is why I I constantly recommend describe to folks. I get that not everyone can be as eloquent as their favorite author or professional game master, and that's where describe comes in. They have an easy to use search interface where you can just type in the thing you need a description for, and then finally crafted box text comes up that you can either read directly to your players or paraphrase. We're talking monsters, places, spells, characters, and more. Not only does Describe have descriptions for the fantasy genre, but they have sci-fi descriptions as well. Also, with their sonic library, you can get ambiances, music, and sound effects you can use in your games, both in person and online. If you'd like to try out everything Describe has to offer, you can do so at the link below. They have hundreds of free content, but if you decide to go with a paid subscription, use the discount code the DM Layer to get 10% off. Number two, dialogue during combat. Now, this hack is really overlooked. Who's to say that once combat breaks out, the monsters suddenly must get all tight-lipped and say nothing? No, th that's a mistake. Monsters should continue to converse with the characters during combat. Now, these will probably be short sentences spat out between spear thrusts, and they may just be taunts and threats, but that's adding another element of engagement to your encounter. Furthermore, how many times have you had a villain who was going to go do some convenient information dropping on the characters before the murderization, mur 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 murderization began, but your players didn't have the patience and someone just attacked? Yeah, that happens a lot, right? <laughs> so. So just have your villain continue the conversation during combat. Sure, it will have a different flavor to it at that point, but if you have important plot relevant information that needs to be relayed to the characters, this totally works. I, I do it quite often. Number three, increase damage, reduce hit points. Okay, now let's hit on a few different things you can do to directly adjust monsters. The first, the first, I'm using my thumb for the first. The the first very basic thing you can do is increase the damage a monster does while dropping its hit points a bit to make it more of a glass cannon. And why that approach, you might ask? Well, think about the standard boring slugfest that often happens in RPG. 
strategies. It usually involves characters beating on monsters that don't offer too much of a threat to them, but that either have high defenses like an armor class or high health. The effect of this is dragging the battle out, but with not a whole lot of excitement because the characters are in like zero danger. Now imagine the converse or the reverse or whatever. Monsters that are very dangerous are dealing a lot of damage to the characters and fast. This creates tension and worry in players because holy crap, that thing is hitting hard. Now they have to scramble, use their brains and work their butts off to figure out a way out of that scrap. A combat like that generally tends to be far more thrilling because of the drama and tension it creates. And then when the monsters are defeated, the victory seems that much more rewarding and fulfilling. Number four, special abilities. Exciting monsters do more than just deal damage. Look at the basic wolf. It's not a very extravagant monster, but in many RPGs, wolves have a trip built into their basic bite attack. Check out the plague zombie from Pathfinder 2. If it hits a PC, it can use an action to grab them. And then on subsequent turn, the zombie can bite the grabbed PC. And if the bite hits, they're also exposed to its zombie rot affliction. You see, special abilities like that take a two dimensional monster, such as a zombie that only thwacks with its fists and turn it into something more, something truly terrifying. Now, when we're talking special abilities, you might have some that do damage, but a better path involves abilities that apply conditions, such as grappled or prone or stunned, or that apply afflictions, poisons, diseases, and curses, such as zombie rot from our previous example. For more ideas, just flip through the best series and find stuff that sounds cool. You could always take an ability from one monster and slap it on another, or just use it to inspire your own creativity. Number five, spell casting. When you take a monster and give it some spell casting abilities, you've instantly just made it twice as interesting. Boring Giant, well now it casts a Meteor Swarm variant that causes nearby boulders to fly up into the air and rain down on the party, inflicting injuries, knocking them prone, and creating difficult terrain. Little pansy kobolds are nothing to slaughter and slay, until a couple of them start casting grease on the floor and others light it on fire with torches. An iron golem is a standard surround and pound until a baked in variant of the Wall of Force spell triggers and an invisible labyrinth is created around it. Now, the key to smoothly implementing spell casting involves a couple things. First, plan in advance which spells you want to use. Look them up, take notes, and be sure that when you implement them in the game, you don't bog things down. Because running spell casters can do just that if you're not prepared. I recommend only giving creatures two or three spells, good ones, of course, ones that you're actually gonna wanna use, that way your options are limited. Limited options will make your life easier, dear game masters. Next, consider how the spells will fit into the rest of the monster's combat plans. The kobolds using the grease spell and torches is a good example of this. And finally, if the game system you're using has a counter spell mechanic, such as that one in D&D 5e, you need to consider creative ways to get around it. Use multiple casters, have casters ready the spell from around a corner where they are out of line of sight and can't be countered and things like that. And this isn't metagaming. This is casters not being stupid and planning for the party crasher that is counterspelling. It's also the game master working to keep their combats more exciting in the face of crappy game mechanics that would otherwise prevent them from doing so. I think you can kind of get an idea of how I feel about Counterspell in the game. By the way, if you're enjoying the information in this video, please give me a thumbs up and leave a comment for the algorithm down below. Let us know how you tweak monsters and combats to make them more interesting. Number six, use magic items. Look, ma magic items are often on the loot lists for adventures, right? So have monsters use those magic items. A pansy kobold is more to worry about when it's pointing a wand at characters. A word of warning though, and this should be obvious. Anything you give your monsters to use against the characters is something the characters will almost assuredly soon have themselves. So think twice about giving a kobold a vorpal sword because when that battle is over, it'll be your player's fighter holding that vorpal sword at level two. For this reason, consumables are your friend. Even a powerful consumable can only be used once. Just 
don't be a jerk. The monster can have two or three of them. Some of them it uses itself during combat, but there's always at least one remaining when your players loot the corpse. It's only fair, right? Unless they, you have it chugging healing potions or other things the whole combat, and then it runs out, and then the players are like, crap, it drank all of our loot. <laughs> Number seven, tactics. Have your monsters use actual tactics in combat and not just go toe to toe with the characters for a slugfest. Even a boring monster like a giant can become interesting when you do this. Instead of just swinging its club or throwing a rock, it pushes a character to the ground first and then whacks him. Then another giant puts his foot on the character, pinning him solidly in place for more whacking. Or two giants throw a third giant they, they literally pick up and throw another giant, the, the big fat one, of course, up over the front line of fighters so that Fatty can threaten the archers and spellcasters. Another giant might push over a column that drops a mound of debris into the middle of the battlefield, separating the characters from each other. Play your spellcasters KG, having them dart around corners and take cover so they can't easily be targeted. Threaten the squishy characters, especially anyone who reveals themselves as spellcasters. Monsters know that spells mean trouble, so they had best squish those casters quickly. Splitting the party, using special abilities to good effect, those are all just examples. What I do when designing adventures and prepping prior to my games is consider the tactics the monsters will use. Number eight, plan the setup. Fun combats often begin with interesting setups, and that can mean lots of different things. It might be as simple as an orc who blows a horn that calls in two more groups of orcs that flank the characters. It could be a battle that takes place on a network of crumbling stone walkways with a lake of boiling blood down below. And then flying monsters that intentionally try to shove characters off the walkways into their dooms. How you implement the setup of the combat will vary drastically and there are practically infinite ways to do it. However, the point is to get away from just tossing monsters in a room and then having them attack. An encounter that has a creative setup is far more likely to be a hit at the table than one that doesn't. Number nine, vary the goal. The character's goal in an encounter doesn't have to be to just kill the monsters. If that's the only goal your players ever have, no wonder they're bored. Instead, decide what the goal of the characters is for any given encounter and what the goal of the monsters is. The characters want to free the farmer's missing goats from the kobold lair. However, the kobolds on guard duty want to stop them. So here, the characters really don't care if the kobolds live or die, perhaps. They just want the goats back. The evil cultists are in the middle of a ritual to sacrifice the queen's sister and destroy the entire royal bloodline. The cultists want to finish the ritual. The characters want to stop them. That might just mean killing the cultists, or it might mean grabbing the sacrificial dagger, or it might mean stealing away the queen's sister. Interesting objectives are the seeds for interesting encounters. Number 10, throw a curveball. Just when you can see your players settling into a rhythm, switch things up. The cultists are nearly defeated. The last few remain, but then the head cultist throws back his hood to reveal his true nature a demon spawn, equally cruel and powerful. The final giant drops to the ground dead, but then they begin twitching. Moments later, several trolls rip their way out from within, former meals that are now able to escape from their consumers. By the way, if you'd like to support the content my team and I make and get over 700 pages of D&D 5e adventures, monsters, traps, puzzles, and other content you can drag and drop into your game, check out our Layers and Legends Ultimate Bundle at the link below. Sweet, now you have several ways to make your next combat all that more exhilarating for you and your players. However, if you'd like to learn more about how to turn any monster into a spellcaster variant, check out this video right here. And until next time, happy game mastering.